Welcome to the first in a series of course videos on Scrintle. Scrintle is a note-taking application that focuses on diagramming and interlinking of cards, as well as a great support for team collaboration on said cards and items of knowledge. This particular video is going to be covering these various topics, and let's dive in. So starting right off, Scrintle has a particular paradigm, and it's not very easy to lose yourself in it. So you're going to have an easier time figuring things out in Scrintle. There's not so much going on that it's going to be overly complicated. There's a few units of knowledge that you can keep in mind and the objects inside of Scrintle and how they work. And this is going to give you all the tools you need to do whatever you want to do inside the application without overcomplicating it. So inside of Scrintle, the main tool and the main unit of knowledge, the atomic unit of information is the card. Now these cards can be on boards, but we're not even gonna to get to that point yet. Cards themselves are atomic pieces of information. You can open up a card in uh, the focus view. We can edit these cards. We can add links. We can add tags, metadata, text, lists, images. A lot of it is very reminiscent of Notion. But we also still have the capabilities to do slash commands, and you can add all different types of media, quick parts like the date time or uh, future and prior dates, and various types of formatting. So these cards, this is where you're actually putting your individual atomic pieces of knowledge and information. Now you can see that this one is technically an input note for me. That's not relevant, but essentially you can create these atomic pieces of information. I can open up any particular uh, dashboard, or I can just go to my desk. Now the desk with, uh, in my case, Mac is Command Shift D. This is essentially your scratch pad. You can just drop whatever you want on here, work on it, and then clean off your scratch pad and sort and allocate them later. But I can double click on here. I can create a new card, uh, test title. And now I can start entering information. Cool. Uh, I'm actually going to do that. Bam. So we can do all different kinds of things with these cards. We can put all kinds of information. And from there, it really becomes determined by you on how you want to organize this information. So other than the cards, what do we have available to organize things inside of Scrintle? Now, given that the cards are atomic pieces of information, you're just gonna focus on the cards, put your information in those. But now for organizing these cards, let's say you have several cards related to a particular topic, subject, or project. Well, this is where the boards come in handy. Now I have a couple boards here. Let's just say I go to my autism research board and we created the test title card. I can easily just like drag and drop this on here. There are many means of doing this, but now I can have this card on this board and it's still on my desk. So the boards are not exclusive. You can have cards on it, as many boards as you want as they're relevant to. So if you have a particular uh, note or card on a particular topic and it's related to other projects and other things, it can live on all of those different boards that you use to organize your body of information on a particular topic or subject. Cards can just be floating out, kind of like boat notes where they're just adrift out in the sea, or they can exist on various or a single dashboard because it's related and tied into a particular project or subject. So boards are a great way of subsetting a swath of your information into a diagrammed view that you then have additional options with. So on my autism research board here, I have interlinked cards. So we, they actually point to each other and the direction of the pointing is important but also you can do things like color coding your individual cards. So let's say you have a taxonomy where I always think this is important is use the features available to organize yourself. And even if it's something that you just define for yourself. So you could say, I have various colors that I use to tell me that all of the research cards that maybe I haven't finished listening to that podcast, reading that article, processing that book, but I wanted to have it represented on this, uh, this board, this diagram, and have cards coming out of it, even if I haven't finished processing the input, well, now I can use a color coordinating system on the card so I can at a glance see all the different things that still need to be processed. 
Uh, and then once the cards are done, at any time, you can just remove the board, clear the board, delete the board, but the cards will still remain. And they're ultimately held in this browse view of just all of these different cards, which can then be uh, searched, sorted, and filtered based on tags. If you're in a team environment, who made the card, the dates that they were created, uh, or even just selecting individual cards, opening them all on a particular dashboard, etc. You can also just straight up edit an individual card from this view. It's a very dynamic way of processing atomic information. But with boards, we can grab a large subset of these, organize them, interlink them, color code them, and process accordingly. And just like the card view where you can see all your cards at a glance and filter and sort through them, you can do the exact same thing with boards. Who created the board? When was the board uh, created and last updated? Select multiple boards, add a new one, but also seeing all of your existing boards. It's like another layer of a meta view on top of all of your atomic information. Here's all of the organizations of those atomic pieces of information in various boards. And this is the boards view. So we go from atomic to a little bit more aggregated and subsetted information to topics and projects in various areas. And then we move into, I'm going to skip tags for now. Then we move into web links. If you have a card and it has a link inside of it to anything, so a web link, google.com, doesn't matter. All of these links are all aggregated here. So anywhere inside of your entire knowledge base, if there is a link, it gets aggregated and pulled here. So if you're trying to find a particular URL and a particular card, and you have thousands of cards and you don't know what you're looking for, but you know the name of the URL, maybe the website it's coming from, you can search the web links view. Aggregates all of your links to one place so that you don't have to do any sort of additional sorting filtering. It's just a piece of metadata you might be concerned with. You can easily find it, search it, and filter down to exactly what you care about here. So if I know I want to see something, let's just search for, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what pops up with autism. Well, probably plenty with my notes given that. Okay, so let's see, we have the CDC here. So let's say I was just beginning my search and I wanted to find the CDC statistics. I can do CDC, bam. And then it finds that in the URL or just in the name of the actual link or the title if you open the web page. So with that, you can easily cut through the clutter and find any relevant web links that you're looking for through the aggregated web link view. Now, let's touch on one of my favorite things, tags. Now, inside of Scrintle, there is, to my knowledge, still no current nested tag feature available. So we can't just use, like, say, this tag with an inbox slash books like I use in Obsidian to say this is both an inbox tag and an inbox slash book tag. You have to do them individually. It's, it's, a, it's a compromise, but it's not the end of the world. So let's say I go to this note here and it has all three of these. So we could say it's a inbox slash podcast or an inbox note. So this way I can tell it's an input, bam. We can go to the inbox and it shows you all inbox notes, all inbox podcast notes. And then if we uh, did status separately, we could then see um, all of the incomplete items. Now, these are not progressive filters uh to my knowledge yeah so oh actually yes they are okay so these are progressive filters in which case you only need a couple of these so you could say i want inbox and then all things podcast by just doing the headphones and then of all the podcasts uh that are inputs that you wanted to look at now you can look at just the red square ones or the ones that are not processed so with progressive filtering we don't really need nested tags. This is kind of like the database folder plugin view in Obsidian, but when you have progressive filtering, you don't necessarily need the granularity of nested tags. It's kind of a, the ultimate functionality is represented on either, either side. So with tags, this allows you to cut through a contextless uh, subset of all of your information and your atomic notes. So if you had like a slew of atomic notes, and cards that are just all there out in the ether and then you bring all of those back into a particular board because it's on a particular topic and you relate them you color code them you process them etc great well, let's say this particular board which in fact it does like here's a video here's a book here's podcasts well, let's say i want to quickly just at a glance through my entire knowledge base i want to look for all of the incomplete processing uh podcast inputs. Now this might be when I want to ask that question, 
but I want it to be for my entire, entire knowledge base, not just my autism research project, because I could easily do that if I'm doing my color coding strategy I mentioned. But if you want to do that for the entire knowledge base as a whole, this is where these tags might come in, or at least just to give you large contextless groupings of cards so that you can see everything at a glance without having to deal with boards at all because they might not be related to a project. It's contextless. So you kind of have the most granular, which is cards, the uh, next um, most granular, which would be tags because those are the contextless groupings, and then you get into even finer detailed groupings with boards because you actually manually have to put these cards on the boards and organize them with some sort of intention or logic. So this is like the most formal organization of the information. And then web links are basically the same level of granularity as cards where you just have all of the accessibility of links. Now, with the granularity that you have using these cards and how they can easily be pulled into multiple directions, have the content via the web links here, pulled out of the card without even having to do anything and just each thing being its own atomic piece of information, this paradigm means that this is a scalable model for information. Boards can have multiple cards that are on multiple boards and you can organize them and create as many as you want. You can search through them at each of these individual lay uh, layers and levels of aggregation and it allows for a lot of scalable growth of your information. Tagging, boards for diagramming, the fact that cards can live and exist on multiple boards, that you have a scratch pad of your desk, and that all of the cards themselves can be atomic information with tags to cut through the noise and the clutter if necessary. This is a scalable model of information processing with a solid feature set, but without too many features to be overall panic inducing via where do I start? How do I build? A system. What is my system? This kind of gives you the structure of a system right off the bat so that you have something to work with that you can go forward with and essentially it's a little opinionated in how they think that you should go about processing information but it is a method and paradigm that is scalable and this is how you might organize your work if you're first stepping into this. And finally the highest level and final level of aggregation. The absolute top tier items that you care about that you're focused on these are going to be the focus items, the starred items. So going back to the view we've been looking at, we have starred. So we have all these aggregated views and your scratch pad of your desk here. We also have recent items, which is a very useful view for things that you've been looking at recently. And now I can just be like, oh yeah, I want to just drop that there. Oh, here's a link to a board. So you could have a board with links to other boards. So from there, you can get really meta with this on how you want to break down organization of topics. Maybe a card always has to live on a singular board, so you have boards linking to boards, linking to board. How I don't I don't know. Really, you can take this kind of meta if you want to, but or you could just keep it simple. So finally, we have starred items. Now you can both star boards and cards. So I have this particular board, which is in fact starred. So if I click on that, you can see, hey, actions, there star and unstar the board. And you can see it disappears and reappears on the left-hand pane. Now, if I go to this particular card here, you can see I have the option to star it. So now I can say, of the things that I was working on, these are the highest priority, these are the focus items, these are the things I was just now looking at. And let's just say you step away from your project for a few days, you come back, oh yeah, starred items. These are what I was actually last working on, last focused on. And I'm not sure if you can see these between individuals on the same project or not, but for an individual working on their own knowledge base, this is one of those key features. I love using I love using starred notes and bookmarks in Obsidian because it really just gets me get to the most poignant and absolute focused items that I was working on and focused on while still letting me organize my information in all the various ways that I cared to. Scrintle has a lot of options for organizing, but they give you an opinionated paradigm with still a little level of flexibility so that you don't get lost in all of the feature rich options but you can still take advantage of a lot of features to do your knowledge work.